about the time when he was 18 months of age, he was saying quite a few words. And he was always like referencing you, making eye contact and very much cheerful. And then he started losing all of that. He started losing words. And not only that, it was just really hard to get his attention at all. But we scheduled a, an appointment with a developmental pediatrician to talk about it. They confirmed that he had autism. He was first diagnosed. Um, I just went home and cried and cried and cried and cried. And uh, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. You know, my, my biggest fear was that this is a lifelong thing. There's no cure, right? So no matter what I do, it's, it's going to be, um, I'm, I'm not going to be have my child back. That's when I came to Sark, and they helped me to stop. What do I need to do? Resources and, and all of that. But it was, it changes your life. Sergio had this uh, specific behavior where he would pick up toys and he would flick it above so it would go right up in the air and then you'd see his sort of eyes look to the side and he'd listen for it to hit the ground. The clinicians in the classroom collected what we call frequency data on this, so how many times did he actually do this per day? Well this was happening upwards of a couple hundred times a day. Rachel said, let's try this. He's gonna have to pick up every single tone. And we did the same thing at home that started to decrease and decrease and decrease, so he's not doing it anymore. In the community school, I think we, we've really gone from making this just a good program to an unbelievably creative, innovative program. Uh, we're able to serve kids now and see all sorts of outcomes with kids that are very severely impacted by autism, all the way to the kids that are very high functioning when they start with us. For many years in autism treatment, we've only focused on working with kids one-on-one. -on -one. But again, as more research has come out about the social deficits of autism, we realize that we need to be focused on getting our kids identified early, in good treatment, and with typically developing peers. Our, our plan was to have her come into the community school with Sergio, but not as an autistic child, as a typical child. They told us that they thought that she had autism as well. Professionally, that was one of the hardest things I have ever done. Um, to sit in a room with a family and turn their world upside down a second time. On the upside, I was also able to help them right away. Uh, she's doing really good. The parent training that we receive every, every week help us big time because we can talk to them and tell them this is what is going on and they always point us in the right direction on how to do things to help them. And every single thing that they have told us to do has worked. We continue to have wait lists, so we're looking to, um, to be able to raise funding so that we can get these parents in to these really important programs. Every day that goes by that they have to wait for services is a day too long. But our children with autism become adults with autism, and the national unemployment rate for our adults is over 90%. You know, and our adults want to work, they're able to work, but you know, they, they don't even know where to begin. My job as a job coach is that I first go out to the job site and I meet with the employer and the trainer. Some of the jobs might be from being a busser, to taking tickets at the theater, to working in a retail environment such as a CVS pharmacy. They love what they do. They want to be at work, they enjoy the people that they're around, and they really feel like they're making a significant difference in their community. They're a part of it, and that's a big deal. So only 10% of our adults with autism are being employed. We've employed over 65% of the adults in our program. With our beneficial beings, um, really there's, there's three objectives. One is to create awareness in our community. The second, probably the most important, is to be able to employ our adults with autism. And then it's to really create the sustainability 
um, for that program so that we are able to provide training for our adults with autism and really help them to find jobs in the community or within the Beneficial Beings business. This organization is very special. I mean, I, I've been very fortunate to meet some wonderful people and I've been very fortunate to take a look at some wonderful organizations, but I have a very, very special place in my heart for this organization and always will. It simply is excellent. I know that there probably is not a better organized, better run, and more frugal organization in terms of getting resources to families and children probably in North America. We want to focus on early detection, identifying better treatments, both behavioral and pharmaceutical, and we want to really focus on our mission to improve the quality of life for people with autism. We're working on our Think Asperger's program where we've developed a screening questionnaire that we're implementing in schools among third and fourth graders that will help us to detect Asperger's much earlier than it is generally detected. When you have your son, your first child, you have all these expectations and all these hopes. You want him to go through many things in life. You want him to be happy, you want him to go to college, you want him to get an education, you want him to have his own family, you want him to... You have all these things, and they hit you with this diagnosis and you're just trying to figure out how to not lose all of that. But we've been getting that all goes back. My husband and I, PJ and I, are thinking that he's gonna be able to go to college because he's progressing. Same with Atalia. What we have gained during this time is amazing. And I want all moms who are having the same uh, struggles that I'm having to feel what I feel right now, hope.